Welcome back. At least 37 Palestinians have reportedly been killed so far in the deadliest day in Gaza for years, with protests near the Israeli border there marking the U.S. decision to move its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. President Trump has described it as a great day for Israel, but does the move risk worsening tensions in the region? Well, from Tel Aviv, we're joined by Mir Zavin Danfa, editor of the Iran-Israel Observer and Middle East analyst, and in central London, Dr. Azam Tamimi, who is the British-Palestinian author and commentator. Uh, Mir Javdanfa first. Uh, it's a provocative act, is this not? We, we've seen what's happened today in Gaza and indeed the West Bank. Has this move lit a touch paper unnecessarily? Um, it depends how you look at it. As far as the Israelis are concerned, it, you know, this is, uh, this is the right move at the right time, especially by the government of Israel. Even the opposition in Israel supports the move to bring the, uh, the, um, <clears throat> the embassy uh, to Jerusalem. You don't find many Israeli politicians, even from the left, who are daring to criticize uh, what has happened, because successive Israeli governments have wanted this to happen, but it didn't, and now Trump is the first one doing it. But the Palestinians, and if you look at it from a Palestinian side, of course you can see how they are angry and frustrated. frustrated. <clears throat> I'm not condoning some of the things that are being said, but you know, four million people here are being ignored. Um, the, the, uh, Trump, the way he did this, is uh, he made you know the statement he made when he when he declared that the Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. He recognizes it. He also, in his statement, made some room, left some room for future negotiations over other parts of Jerusalem as part of a future state for Palestine. But you know, the the perception here is that. He's not interested in peace. His moves have been one-sided. And, you know, in politics, perception is more important than reality. So the Palestinians have no room and no patience to listen to him. And in a way, if you look at it from a Palestinian point of view, that's well, let's understandable. Get, well, let's get that Palestinian point of view. Let's talk to Dr. Azam Tamimi. And, and Dr. Tamimi, the peace process, it seems, is dead in the water. The road to peace, you know, it seems that that ended a very long time ago. Something like this, something provocative, something that changes the situation on the ground. Is there no merit at all to it if it does change reality? I think for uh, Trump, uh, it is probably uh, useful for him uh, to assure his constituency in the United States of America in prelude to the next election. But as far as uh, the Palestinians are concerned, I think on the short, on the short term, uh, what has happened today will awaken those who have been under the illusion that a two-state solution was possible between the Israelis and the Palestinians. This is com the, the uh, end of any such uh, uh, thinking. Let's bring in uh, Mir Javdanfar. Um, why not leave Tel Aviv as the embassy when all, you know, most other countries have their embassies in Tel Aviv? It wasn't doing any harm in Tel Aviv. Isn't there the concern that this could, could lead to, to more negativity than positivity? You know, I, I tell you an interesting fact here, uh, uh, Jane. You know, the Israeli government wanted to move some of the ministries from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, and some of the workers in Tel Aviv refused it <clears throat> because Tel Aviv is much more exciting and the nightlife here is much better than in Jerusalem, with all due respect to Jerusalemites. Mm. But it's a very political move. It's pre President Trump is playing to his audience. His audience are evangelicals, not American Jews. Believe it or not, 70% of American Jews are actually Democrats. He's playing to evangelicals. Evangelicals basically see uh, the, you know, the completion of Israel and all Jews returning here as one of the signs for which will facilitate the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, so he's playing to his home base. And, but I have to say also, you know, as much as I think uh, I, would love, I would have loved to have seen this as part of a peace negotiations to have Jerusalem moved to, um, to uh, so the U.S. Embassy moved to Jerusalem, I have to say, and as a critic of Netanyahu, I have to say that President Abbas recently blaming Jews for the Holocaust makes it much more difficult for the vocal minority in Israel who want to reach peace with the Palestinians. So as much as we have responsibility, I'd like to ask my Palestinian neighbors also to refrain from such inflammable and, 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 and insensitive comments which they make, which makes the life, uh, which makes the job of uh, improving relations with them much more difficult. As we speak to you, we're looking at images from inside the new U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem, or indeed the gardens of this new U.S. Embassy, which is going to be officially opened in a short while. Dr. Tamimi, um, does the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem take off the, the concept of Jerusalem being a negotiating point for two sides in the future? The Israelis think it is eternal and undivided. The Palestinians 
think it should also be their capital, at East Jerusalem at least. Uh, has, has this ended Jerusalem as a point of negotiation? Well, it has ended the entire process of negotiations. Uh, uh, about 25 years ago, uh, even people like me who were uh, not uh, supportive of uh, the Oslo uh, Accords uh, thought that uh, had the Oslo Accords uh, succeeded in producing a two-state solution, probably that would have been it, and we would have uh, uh, completely and forever resolved uh, the conflict. Uh, but today, it seems we are back in square number one, and now the Palestinians, as you see in Gaza, uh, are uh, demanding to return to their original towns and villages from which they were dispossessed uh, in 1948, or their forefathers. Mm. Uh, and the timing of that, um, you know, the, the opening of, of this embassy, um, Mayor Jeff Dampa, the day before the Nakba, as the, the Palestinians call it, the day before the formation, the day after the, the formation of the Palestinian state. Um, it is a provocative date, isn't it? It is. It's like adding salt to the wound. Okay, uh, so, but sorry, I think that point was to, was to Mayor, sorry. Ah, sorry, sorry. Mayor. Okay. Um, I look. I can understand uh, why it is provocative for the Palestinians, and 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 I, and I sympathize that tomorrow is is Nakba day. It's it's a painful day for them, but I'd like to ask my respected Palestinian uh, colleague and I hope neighbor in a future Palestinian state, not just put all the blame on 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 Israel. As much as I'm against the Netanyahu government's policies, we tried very hard during Oslo to reach peace. But Hamas was blowing up and killing Israelis at an unprecedented rate. What brought down the peace process and the Rabin government, even after Rabin was assassinated, the, the Likud won, uh, despite the massive wave of sympathy because of Hamas bombing. So, yes, the Netanyahu government is wrong, but we have to remember why the, those who wanted a two-state solution in Israel became weakened. Because the more we gave to the Palestinians, and it is their land, I'm not disputing it, Gaza is Palestinian, it's not Israeli, the more Israelis were killed. So we have to find the solution. If we have to live in peace, we have to find a situation where we give the Palestinians their land back and we in Israel have security. We have not reached that solution as easy as it sounds. The miserable history of this region shows us that we have not reached that point where we could have an actual balance in terms of Palestinian self-determination and Palestinian state and Israeli security being equal and on balance and on par. I mean, is that a fair point, Dr. Tamimi? I, I was there when Israel pulled out of Gaza 10 years ago now, is it? Um, and, and, and there were great hopes that if the Palestinians were given Gaza, they were, gi they were given this land, that the Israelis would leave, that, there, that it would lead to, to more peace on the border between the two countries. Why has that not happened? Well, Israel pulled out of Gaza not uh, as part of any negotiated settlement. They pulled out because occupation was becoming too expensive for them, too costly. And the problem is not with Hamas or with any Palestinian. The problem is with the idea that uh, there is a group of humans who are superior while other humans are inferior. The idea of Zionism, that the Jews anywhere in the world can come and live in that country because they have uh, some sort of a divine right. This is something that you cannot find in any religion, in any community in the world. Uh, and this I, is tolerated by the community, world because just, of hypocrisy. Sorry, sorry for interrupting, but, uh, but just, you know, as an outsider's point of view, you know, wh wh whoever you believe should, should live in Gaza, uh, if the Israelis have left, can you understand why Israelis living alongside Gaza will feel that they have left Gaza, why are they still being uh, targeted across the border from inside Gaza? Because the majority of the people of Gaza happen to be refugees and they can see their villages and towns uh, across the border. Believe me, peace can only be achieved the South African way. We have to end apartheid and treat everybody equally as human beings. Only then we can have peace. Not when Zionists believe that, because, th that they have some sort of a divine uh, right to come from anywhere and live in my mother's house and in my father's land. Mayor well, Jeff Danfa, we, we, sorry to... Sorry, Sorry to cut but uh, go ahead. There were one million Jews who were dispossessed from Arab countries. Um, you don't see me coming and saying, okay, there can be no peace until my Iraqi neighbor, who was expelled from his house, Iraqi Jew, who was expelled from his house, whose uncle was hung in Baghdad after Israel was created, there cannot be no peace until he goes back there. I'm sorry, that's, you see, uh, as much as I condemn uh, Netanyahu's uh, settlement expansion policies, it's uh, opinions and uh, views like, uh, like Mr. Tamimi, which also prevents us from peace. We want to have two states. The idea of Zionism is that we have a country of our own. Where I live right now in Tel Aviv is given to me by the United Nations. 
And if your dream is that there can only be peace if all of Israel, not just the settlements, even pre-1967, is given to you Palestinians so that you can have your own state, you can have your own refugees, but we can now not have our refugees who are expelled from Arab countries and see any justice or have any new country, then there cannot, there cannot be any peace. There can only be peace when, in my opinion, the people of Palestine have their own state in, as part of a negotiated settlement in Gaza and in West Bank, and we stay in our, in our, uh, in our border or in our international recognized borders. This yeah. land now where I'm living, Tel Aviv, is Israeli. And also, let's not forget, and as much as I'm not saying Israel is a paradise, it is in a Zion state of Israel where we have the most democratic institutions for Arabs and Muslims, and we are very proud of it, and we will defend it to the death. Indeed, but near there will be lots of people watching who will say, Palestinians will say that that land was Palestinian at one point and that they have equal rights. But it's not something that either of you gentlemen are going to agree on. Uh, we're going to leave it there. Thank you both very much for joining us today.